With the dyno cell installed, Brett Williamson made a visit to update our Superflow dynamometer. Before we get into the upgrade, let's take a minute to show you how a dyno works. The twisting an engine makes is called torque. To measure it accurately, the dynamometer acts like a giant water brake. The engine's crankshaft gets connected to the dyno's impeller housing. Water inside the housing creates resistance, making it hard to turn the crankshaft. This heats up the water and puts a serious load on the impeller housing as it literally tries to rotate off the dyno's frame. A force transducer bolted between the housing and the frame measures the rotational strain, which the computer translates into torque and horsepower measurements. The hot water gets pumped back to the main storage tank for reuse. While most of the dyno's water is used to absorb torque, some of it regulates engine temperature. All of this makes for an accurate, efficient, and consistent dyno test system. The PowerMark absorber is a twin rotor design. It also uses an inlet and an outlet valve. The advantage to that is that if we're going to test over a very wide range of RPM, like a wide span, that lets us adjust for that so that you can run that engine from 2,000 to 8,000 RPM if you wanted to. The capacity of the absorber is, is pretty good as well. Um, people are testing engines 3,000 horsepower or so with, with that kind of brake. Superflow's PowerMark dynamometer can monitor a whopping 139 channels of engine data. We don't need that many, but Brett is setting us up to measure boost level. On the console side of the equation, he is updating the firmware to make sure we have the latest enhancements to the dyno software. Before the dyno's first use, it needs calibration. To check accuracy, we hung 400 pounds from the power absorption unit and looked at the reading on the console. Now we simply calibrate the software to match that value. Calibration is a matter of faith in the, in the system. You must build that faith yourself, and if calibrating frequently is something you need to do to build that faith, then do so. Otherwise, what I normally say is, you could leave it alone until that day that you think the numbers are wrong. Then put those weights on there and check it. All that's left now is to make the first dyno run with our new setup. Okay, so right away, noticeably quieter. You like by a bunch. That's much quieter. Usually when we start the engine, a bunch of people will come running back because they know we're running, so uh, I kind of like that it's, you know, we're a little bit more secretive now. So. You can always open the door and fire it up. <laughs> They'll come yeah. back. All right, you guys ready? Let's do it. All right. Make some noise. I think now that we have a, a, a running dyno, uh, we get, we're going to make some power. So now thank it's, you. It's time to go in there and make more. It's time to go in there and make some more. You're right, man. Thank you very much. I'm going to fire it back up. For more information on anything you've seen today, visit PowerNationTV.com.